Hey everybody, in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to do handheld panoramas. Panoramas are my best selling images. You can create such unique photos by taking panoramas. The problem is setting up the tripod. There are times that I want to travel light without the tripod, but still be able to get the pano. I've been working on this technique for a while to make sure it's solid and works. Just make sure you subscribe to my channel so you do not miss any tips and techniques. Now I know that you could just take out your phone and get your pano done. That's great, I still do that. It helps me visualize the pano I'm about to take with my much nicer camera. Now, big reason why I'm interested in doing this is right now, my backpack is fully loaded. I've got my drone, my drone controller, and a heavy tripod strapped to the back of this thing. All three of those are things I don't wanna carry when I'm touring places like maybe Venice or Florence or Zermatt. Uh, you know, one of those beautiful destinations I like to go to. So, to cut down on weight, I keep that stuff off and it makes for a much more pleasurable afternoon walk through the city and exploring. Uh, so I need a way to capture those images in a very large format. But the other problem I'm facing is that my new camera is a full sensor camera. And this was an unexpected purchase. My Canon 7D kind of croaked on me, which was a crop sensor camera. I have crop sensor lenses. And when you use a crop sensor lens on the ESO or the EOS R camera, instead of getting the full 30 megapixels, you only get 11.6. So with, now don't get me wrong, that is a high enough resolution that I can sell my stock images, but it does make them smaller than what I'm accustomed to. I was shooting at 16 megapixels. So this is just another technique so that I can have larger or a much more resolution and potentially get more sales. Every image I'm gonna show you guys is gonna be handheld. You will see me have the camera, camera up on the tripod just as I'm shooting some B-reel uh, to keep that uh, my camera steady while I'm flipping switches and just kind of demonstrating what I'm up to. But again, all the images I show you in this episode are gonna be strictly handheld panoramic images. Now I'm gonna put this location in my lo locations newsletter on patreon.com forward slash EWJ uh, for my camera crew and my expedition team. Guys, I just want you to be careful if you come out to this location. I had to do just a little rock climbing, so be careful. But also this is Deception Pass. We are entering low tide, which means the, the flow of the water in some cases is going to go up to about 30 miles an hour at its peak. Um, there, this is a very dangerous area, so you definitely do not want to risk falling into the water. Um, I can tell you just by looking just around me right now, the currents that are all around me are deadly. So be careful when you come out here. So just like with any other panel, we need to go to complete manual mode. We need manual focus, manual shutter speed, manual ISO, and manual aperture. We need complete control over everything because what we're going to do is we're going to first set the focus and the exposure on our subject and then we're going to lock it into the camera the reason if we don't hang on here we have a sea otter hang on so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the bridge itself and that's going to set the focus for the entire photo shoot so let me do that real quick go and there so I did a half touch of the shutter button which which focused the camera with autofocus and now I'm set the manual okay next up I'm going to take a look at my ISO value and to see that my ISO is down at 100 now we need to make sure that our shutter speed is going to be appropriately fast so you should never shoot any part of this image if the shutter speed drops below 1 60th of a second personally I keep a no less than 1 100th of a second because that helps to make sure that any breathing or heartbeats that you have while the shutter's open doesn't make your images or that particular uh, part of your image blurry if any part of this entire panorama is blurry it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the parts that I'm going to have in focus or in, that I want inside the panorama. I'm going to turn on my histogram and then I'm just going to kind of scan around to make sure that uh, I don't have any pixels that are going to be blown out or any ones that are going to be completely black. All right. 
we're good. Now, what I'm gonna do is do another half touch of the, of the, uh, of the shutter button. This little dial for me, uh, this controls my shutter speed. Now I've got the aperture set at f8. For my lens, that seems to give me pretty sharp images. When I do this, when I do the half touch, at the bottom your exposure meter fires off and I'm going to be aiming right at my primary subject and I'm going to set the exposure so that the primary subject is perfectly exposed. All right, now, here we go. One last look around with the histogram just to make sure we're not gonna have any blown out pixels or any pixels that are completely black. All right, we're all good. So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and take the first series of images. Now for this one, I am going to go literally across the bottom come up and go back across so we have a huge image it's very important that we do not move the camera more than one third uh, for each time we move uh, we change position so um, in my camera I kind of have a little uh, round area because I have my um, leveler turned on and I look at what's on the right because I'm gonna go left here and whatever's on the right uh, line when I move it then it's gonna I'm gonna stop when it hits the left this takes patience so here we go During this time, I'm taking overlapping images, and I'm being sure to be very still for each image. Again, this does take a lot of patience, but it does pay off in the end. In Lightroom, take the time to examine each image to make sure that none of them are blurry. I take my handheld panoramas three times, so I always have plenty of opportunities to get it right. When you are ready, select all of your images that you want to include in your pano. Click Photo. Photo Merge, Panorama. If Lightroom is not able to create the pano, select one of the other merge modes in the upper right and let Lightroom try again. Here's the final product. I've been working on doing more dramatic editing. Let me know which version you prefer in the comments. Now for our pro tips. First of all, overshoot the entire panorama, left, right, top, bottom. You want a lot of extra information all along the sides of your actual image. That way if Lightroom can't merge something on the edges, there's a chance you're still going to get the crop that you want. Also be careful of the empty sky. As you're doing the part, the top part of your pano, if you have too much empty sky, Lightroom is not going to be able to merge it. So I try to make sure at least no less than one third of the bottom of that frame has content from the ground, actually has land, so that there's information for Lightroom to do the actual merge. Now sometimes you can do it with clouds, but clouds are really fuzzy. And it's sometimes it's hard for Lightroom to figure out how to merge clouds and different images together. So don't always count on them. On a day like today, we had clouds. We might have gotten away with it, but if it's a cloudless sky, you're not going to get away with it. So make sure you've always got some type of land in there as much as possible. Well, everybody, I think it's time to wrap up this episode. I've actually been shooting some content for um, for the uh, Patreon channel. Um, so, yeah, I actually had a seal. I actually was able you know, to do a little photography with the seal here. You can see I'm a little more relaxed right now as I'm just kind of soaking in the sun, enjoying this beautiful afternoon. But it's time for me to pack up the gear and go get some lunch. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss content like what is going to come up next week. I'm continuing to take advantage of my last few weekends here in the Pacific Northwest. I am either going to capture my first epic image of a bald eagle or take advantage of this new sunset location. You'll just have to tune in to find out which one. Please also consider adopting a shelter animal or donating to your local animal shelter. See you all next week as this adventure continues.